Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dal and this week seems to be the perfect week to catch up some brand new characters in the War Within expansion. Whether you're looking to explore some of the newest class updates that have been released with the most recent patch notes, opening up some brand new gameplay elements for classes like rogues, mages, death knights and a handful of others, playstyles that I think are worth highlighting and are worth exploring. Or if you're simply just hoping to bolster your army of alts, heading into the patch 11.1 and get every single class ready in order to be better prepared to pick your main once you have some additional information regarding the season 2 of the war with an expansion and the update of 11.1 of the undermine zone whatever your reason may be right now is a perfect time for you to be able to catch up some of those old characters with additional gear and items and for today's video i wanted to go over some of the newest catch-ups that have been added specifically as of this week but also all of the well-known methods that are probably the most efficient but also will take the least amount of time to make some excellent item level gains as always if you guys want to see more regular updates for the war with an expansion be sure to follow the channel and subscribe but otherwise let's dive right in so one of the easiest and the first things you should do when it comes to catching up a brand new character is take advantage of the time walking week that is currently available as of this week. The time walking week this week in particular is Wrath of Lich King, which means you'll be able to dive into the Old War raid to catch up on a ton of gear from that instance. Before you dive into the raid, be sure to pick up a frozen path through time quest in order to get yourself a cache of Nerubian treasures with champion loot gear from the Nerubar Palace. And the reason why the raid is actually better to do compared to the dungeons for the Wrath of Lich King time walking is because the raid is a lot more efficient as every single boss within the raid is going to drop you or possibly can chance to drop you champion track gear. And with Old War being a raid filled with the bosses, 13 boss encounters in particular, that's an opportunity for you to get a lot of gear, but also any other player in that group that doesn't actually need champion track gear that are just doing it for the weekly raid quest, they can also trade you gear as well, which by this point of the expansion happens quite regularly. Early. And while inside of the raid entrance, also grab the raid quest, where for defeating the final boss of the raid, Yak Saron, you also get hero track gear from within the instance. While not all of the gear inside of Old War is going to be best in slot, some of the items could actually be some of the best pieces or comparably best pieces compared to the current season's gear when gearing out a lot of your characters. For example, if you get yourself the Wrath Stone on hero track, this trinket can actually be one of the best trinkets for strength and agility classes and is a pretty close to Biss, specifically for classes like Death Knights, Feral Druids, Havoc Demon Hunters, all specs of Hunters, as well as Enhancement Shamans, and it's very much comparable in power to the Skarden's Grace Trinket from the Grim Batal Dungeon. For caster classes, you're really looking to get yourself a living flame for your hero track item, which will be the best intellect based trinket for any DPS intellect classes. And if you want to know just how strong this trinket is, right now it rivals the Spy Master's Web as your best in slot trinket. But unlike how with Spy Master's Web, you have to actually stack up the damage bonus and you can only unleash it later after your first two minutes set of cooldowns or three minutes set of cooldowns have been down, the living flame is a lot easier to use because it doesn't have that same stacking component it lines up with two minute cooldown classes even if you die you don't lose out on any of the stacks of living flame like you would with spy master's web so it's basically the same amount of power but without the drawbacks of the spy masters the raid box you get for the actual raid quest also gives you a chance to drop invincible from the box which is how i've been able to get the mount you don't actually have to go and kill the lich king himself in order to be able to get invincible just running your odds through the time walking raid and completing the raid quest gives all of your characters a slightly higher chance than normal to possibly obtain a very very rare mount now as of last week they did add a couple of new other catch-up boxes one for pve content and the other for pvp the first one being Valor boxes, which can be bought by your main character that has at least a thousand rating within Mythic Plus Dungeons, and they can award your old characters at the very bare minimum veteran track dungeon gear from the War Within expansion. While not amazing gear, it does at least serve a purpose. One, if your main is capped on gear, you can't upgrade any of your items due to sitting on capped 2000 Valor Stones, like my main is, those boxes can at least go somewhere and can be at least turned into items for a brand new character that just doesn't have a lot of gear like my demon heart for example get a little item level but i still got trinkets from older expansions and even rings and items so at that point i kind of just get an opportunity to gamble those valor stones to 
potentially get some decent upgrades on that character, which are why these are a lot, lot better on a freshly geared or freshly leveled character that has no gear whatsoever. If anything, those items, while not amazing, will at least set up the character to be able to start doing something all on their own, like either joining groups for dungeons, some of the lower land ones, or even just to dive into delves where at least you have better gear than starter green leveling gear, which will at least give your character just enough survivability to make it through a tier 7s or even better yet tier 8s, and that is how you'll be able to get at least a little bit of items to help kickstart that one character. On the flip side, while we have some PvE boxes, there's also an alternative version for PvP boxes as well. First of all, Conquest is now uncapped, and you can farm as much Conquest as you want to, either on your main or any of your alls to gear them up for PvP. But also, with Conquest being uncapped, we got Conquest boxes, similar to Valor boxes, which you can buy for Conquest, and then set them to your alts to get random pieces of loot. The gear from these is a lot, lot better for PvP content than PvE. However, just like the Valor boxes, it is also randomized. If anything, it offers great starter sets and starter pieces in order to help your alts gear out a little bit quicker and increase their PvP survivability before you can start fully gearing them out with their own set of Conquest gear and optimizing their items with crafted pieces for PvP content. But outside of the brand new forms of catch-up that has been made available this week in particular, but also technically last week with those catch-up boxes, you also do have some quick ways in order to be able to obtain gear right now from some of the well-known methods within the 20th anniversary update. We also shouldn't forget the bronze celebration caches are still a thing with the 20th anniversary update, and there's a lot of different ways for you to be able to get champion track gear from these boxes. The first weekly event that is available on 20th anniversary update will award you champion track gear with a subsequent awarding you veteran track pieces so if you want a quick piece of champion track gear i feel like one of the easiest places to earn this is through lfr brd technically you can also do world bosses or any of the other events like time walking dungeons for classic or the chromie time thing but i think lfr brd is honestly the fastest way and the best way because you get more than just gear but also valuable currency not only do you get champion track items, but also delve keys from the box, but for slaying bosses within the raid, you also do get Valor Stones and also a few crests in order to upgrade the gear that you're also getting, which I think makes it just a little bit more worthwhile and especially incredibly quick to queue into if you're doing this as a tank or as a healer. Besides this, also don't forget the renowned vendors still have gear that your alts can utilize as well. And if you're just looking for some quick item levels on those alt characters, you could always just buy renowned vendor gear that is veteran but also champ track gear on those vendors all you gotta do is transfer resonance crystals which is a currency you earn passively as you do any open world or most world activities out within kaz algar and there's a good chance you're sitting on a bunch of them in order to transfer them to your alts to get some early item level upgrades very very quickly they can at least help bolster some of your alts item level in order to get into group content a little quicker like always, another easy way to get a bunch of champion track gear on a brand new character is to spam Dells, either as a tier 8 or as a tier 7. Technically, if you're just looking for item levels and gear, tier 7s are a little bit easier than 8s, but it's a lot more efficient to do Dells on a tier 8 because you also get to fill out your great vault with a bunch of hero track items for you to loot at the end of the weekly reset. Dells are fantastic for raw gear drops if you're just looking for as high of an item level available. They're not amazing for Valorstones or Crest, however and that will be something you'll want to try to solve as you're trying to gear out all of your alls because i feel like always i'm soft capped on those currencies in particular but if you're just looking for raw item level and as many pieces as possible i found delves to be the fastest thing that you could do right now in the open world probably even more reliable than just diving into dungeons because there it's a chance of getting gear not a guarantee while delve you're always guaranteed to get an item though it is a bit randomized of what item you get and now that you've got a couple of pieces of gear, you also then need to upgrade those items with Valor Stones and Crests. However, you can't wax farm like you used to way back at the start of the expansion anymore, which the wax form was amazing to be able to get Valor Stones very, very quickly. And ever since the wax method got hotfixed way back, there hasn't really been a great way of being able to get really quick Valor or Crests since then. However, I did find a couple of methods that work for me really, really well. One of the best ways to get all these currencies I found, at 
least when it comes to the most efficiency, is through raiding, either from BRD or from the Nurbar Palace, which are both fairly equal in efficiency. You just need to find a good group that can either run these on normal or even better yet, heroic, in order to be able to get as many of the currencies as possible, while also being able to gear out your character. Outside of that though, I feel like Delve Radiant Echoes are a great form of Valor spamming if you're a solo player that prefers Delve content over group content. If you can slot 5 of these Radiant Echoes at a Radiant Echo event at a time, that is probably going to be the most efficient way for you to get some of that farm going and get a lot of Valor Stones but also more keys for future Delves and it's probably one of the best methods to make sure that you're guaranteed to have plenty of Valor to upgrade all of your future items. Outside of that, if you do enjoy group content, I found Keystone Dungeons have at least plus 4 difficulty or lower, easy to get into, but also the content isn't all that difficult for even a lowly geared character. And Keystones I feel like end up being one of the better places to get currency, but also Valor, but only if you do dungeons where you can get score upgrades. Because if you do a dungeon, and if somebody in that group gets a score upgrade for their Mythic Plus score, you actually earn bonus Valor Stones for the entire group, which is why I usually try to do a dungeon that I don't have a score for in order to get myself score or try to join groups with somebody that also does not have a lot of score on and old. This way you can farm Valor Stones and Crest as efficiently as possible in order to be able to upgrade all of your cash gear and delve gear and potentially even the gear that you can upgrade from your time walking adventures. But with that, that's going to be the entire list of how you can take advantage of some of the different catch-ups that are available as of this week, where you can get the most amount of value for very little time spent. As always, I want to thank all of you guys so much for watching this update, and I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did enjoy it or found it informative, go ahead and give this video a like. I would very, very much appreciate it. Join our Discord community to keep up with all the regular War Within updates. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below, and as always, I'll see all of you guys in the next one.